What if you could transform a boring sparkline in Power BI from this to this? Is that even possible in Power BI? It is, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Let's say the boss needs a report to show payments by customers. We're working on a visual to show percent of dollars paid late over the course of a year. For this visual, you just wanna show the trend, so you're using a sparkline. Here we have a card and we have a line chart. For our line chart, we have our Y axis set with a minimum of zero and a maximum of one. Now you notice here there's a bug in Power BI where even though I have the zero and one set, it's showing auto either on top of or below the values I've already entered in there. So just so you're aware, the values are still there. They didn't go anywhere. It's just a bug in Power BI. Getting back to our chart, we can see the peaks and the valleys, but it doesn't really tell the whole story. We see 16%, here 29%, here 46%. Obviously, late payments are never good, but at what point does this really start to hurt the business? From looking at the spark line, we really can't tell. That means, to provide that context, we need to add some information to the line chart. To do that, we'll go over to PowerPoint. Here in PowerPoint, we're going to insert a rectangle. We'll click and drag to draw a rectangle, and then we'll right-click, we'll choose Format Shape, and here we want to change the size of this shape. We're going to go with 1.5 inches high by 3 inches wide. Next, we'll choose Gradient Fill. We only need two stops, and here we have four. So we can just click these two and delete them. And for our first stop, we're gonna make this dark blue color. The hex code for dark blue that we're gonna use is 000033. And for the other stop, we're gonna make it red. And the hex code for red is FF0000. Our gradient is actually upside down. We want the red to be on top, so we'll go to angle and we'll change this to 270. Next, we want to change this dark blue so that it's transparent. The reason for that is that Power BI doesn't render colors perfectly. So even though we're going to use the same color in Power BI, sometimes the colors are a little bit off. So by making this transparent by raising this all the way to 100%, that'll ensure that it blends into the blue in Power BI. Now in our case, the business determined that once the percent dollars paid late begins to exceed 25%, it causes significant cash flow issues. So here, we're going to move our red stop so that it's at 50%. And the reason we're going to do 50% is that the way PowerPoint creates the gradient, right around 25% is where the red really starts to become visible. Now last, we're going to go to our line and remove the outline. Now we're ready to save this. So we'll right click, save as picture, and here we're just going to call this gradient. Now we'll go back over to Power BI, and here we're going to insert a rounded rectangle. We want that rectangle to be 300 by 300. So we'll go to General, go to Properties, and it already is 300 by 300. The only thing we need to do here, we'll go to Shape, and under Shape, we're going to change the rounded corners to be about 10%. That's good. Next, we'll go to Style, and under Color, this is the fill color. We want to change this to that same dark blue we used, 000033. Now we want to turn the border off. And now we're ready to bring in our gradient. So we'll go to Image, choose our gradient image. And now we can select both of these. We'll go to Format, Align, Align Center. As you can see, the gradient isn't quite as wide. So let's go and check the properties on that. It says it's the same width, but what we can see here is that Power BI adds padding to images. So first, let's reduce this to match the aspect ratio that we used in PowerPoint. Our PowerPoint image was 1.5 inches by 3 inches. Here we're going to make this 150 by 300. Now, one way to widen this would be to increase the width over here. So we can change this to 320. The problem with that is you can see Power BI didn't really change the size of our image. It just changed the size of this bounding box around the image. So what we have to do in this case, is we have to try to line this up visually as best we can. And now we need to use one of the corners to widen this because we already saw that just increasing the width wasn't going to work. Now we can take both of these and drag these over to our line chart. I want to line it up so that you can just see on both edges the line chart popping out. That looks pretty good. Next, we need to move our line chart to the top layer. So to do that, we'll go to View, Selection, and we can see our line chart is all the way at the bottom. Let's move it all the way up to the top. There. Now we'll zoom in so we can see everything a little bit better. I'm going to go into about 180. And it looks like our red gradient might be off just by about a pixel or so. So we can select that, go to General, go to Position, and just decrease that by one. That looks perfect. Next, we want to move our gradient and our chart down closer to the bottom of the dark blue rectangle. And then we want to take our red gradient. We want to line it up at the top of our chart. As we can see our chart here, the very top is 100%. So we want to match the top of the red gradient with the top of our chart. So click on the gradient, go to general, and move this up. Perfect. Next, we're going to copy our line chart. And we want to line that up with the original. And we'll select our second line chart. And here under Y-axis, 
we want to click Invert Range. Now that looks kind of crazy, but it's just an upside down version of the original. And for this chart, we want to convert it to an area chart. Now because we've inverted the range, we need to invert our measure as well. So I've created a measure over here. And because remember that our Y axis maximum is one, the measure is one minus percent dollars paid late. So let me rename this to area chart. Now for the area chart, we're going to delete the existing measure and we're going to add our new measure. Now you can see the two charts line up. Next for our area chart under visual, we're going to go to lines and then we'll choose colors. And here we're going to use our dark blue color. Since we've used that recently, we can just click it here. And then for the shade area, we're going to take the area's transparency and make it 0%. Now we'll select our line chart and we're going to change the color of this line and we'll use this light blue. Next, let's drag our card onto the visual and here we'll change the call out value and make this white. And then we'll slide that all the way up to the top. Now we need to scroll up so we can see our slicers and here we'll click through a few of the different customers. You can see Power BI even gives us a nice transition effect as we switch between customers. And now with our gradient in place, we can see when we go down to February here, our percent dollars paid late at 16% is still very much in the blue area. Now once we jump to March, our percent dollars paid late increases to 29%. Now we're starting to see some of the red in the chart. Now if you move on to April at 46.6%, now the red shows through clearly. <laughs>